Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher from We Are Film, and today I'm gonna talk about how you can use curves to color grade your footage. So let's get into it. Color grading is one of the most important parts of finishing your film, commercial, music video, or whatever you're making. And one of my favorite ways to color correct and color grade footage is by using curves. Curves are incredibly flexible and they're very, very easy to use. Now the best part about curves is that they're in most NLEs. Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro all have a version of curves, or of course, most color plugins have a version of curve. So today we're gonna hop over to the computer and I'm gonna show you how you can use curves to make your footage look better. All right guys, so we are here on the computer now and I wanna first tell you that no matter what software you're in, curves are going to work basically identical. They're gonna look the same, do the same thing. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve today, but of course if you're in Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, they are going to be exactly the same. They might look a little different, maybe have a little different features here and there, but the curves are gonna basically work the same. So don't be afraid, <laughs> just because you're seeing something different, it's all the same. So right now I have some C200 footage that we shot for our GH5 versus C200 video, which if you're excited for that, be sure to like and subscribe down below so you can kind of catch that coming up soon. Turn on the notification bell too. So this is some C200 footage that we shot in RAW and in C-Log3. So what I did was um, I actually put a node here that is making it a Rec. 709. Now what you need to know is if you're in a different editor, so let's say you're in Premiere Pro, you want to use a conversion LUT and convert your uh, image to Rec. 709. Once you've converted your image to Rec. 709, then you want to work with curves. What I like to do though, is I like to make sure that I, my curves are before my Rec. 709 conversion, because that way I'm working with the actual log footage, not a converted one. So for instance, in Premiere, what I would do is just add two Lumetries, and then on the bottom Lumetri, you're going to add the Rec. 709 conversion, and LUT, and then on the top one, you're going to do your curves. So again, just make sure you're doing your curves before you're doing your conversion, at least in the workflow. You want it on, because if I had it off, it would be very hard to work with. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, so curves are pretty basic, and... I'm not going to get into the X, Y so much, but you just have to know that if you're, you know, this is your highlights up here, this is your midtones, this is your shadow. Just imagine that this line is basically your image from its darkest points to its lightest point. And as you move things up and over, depending on which way you move them, it is going to get brighter or darker or move again, darker, brighter. So up left is brighter and then down right is darker. Okay. So I'm going to reset those. Now, in most cases, you're going to do what's called an S-curve. So this is typically what you would do to kind of get a good basis. So I'm going to click down here, roughly my shadow area, and I'm going to pull that down because I want it to be nice and contrasty. And I can see in my scopes over here that I'm not clipping anything, but I want to get a little bit lower probably. Something along the lines of there. And then I'd probably grab my highlights up here and pull those up till they're not... Uh, totally out of it. Now, I'm actually doing that on the wrong one. Whoops. <laughs> uh, so we'll do that again. I'm just going to pull those shadows down again so they're not clipping. And then pull those highlights up. I'm gonna actually going to add some saturation too, just so it looks better. Um, cool. So that's your typical S curve. And I'm going to turn this off so you can see a little bit better. But basically, that is your typical S-curve. You can see that line is our normal image. So we're darkening our shadows and we're bringing our highlights up. That's basically what just is adding contrast. Now, that's great. But in this image, there's a lot of things that I want to do to make this a little bit better. And I want it to look a little more punchy, but also not lose detail in places. So if we actually look at our original image, we can see that there is quite a bit, whoops, if I can turn it off, of dynamic range here. I mean, basically nothing's clipping, maybe the little, you know, those, that bokeh up there. So what we want to do is we want to optimize that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here in my highlights and kind of pull those down a little bit so they're not clipping. And then I'm going to bring my midtones up and then I'm going to bring the really darkest shadows all the way down, like way down, uh, probably about there. And then I might even lift, or I can adjust these if I want to. So as I'm adding points, I'm creating points that I can then manipulate. And the best part about curves is, is that when you create other points, those now become sort of anchor points for this. So let's say I made those two right there, and now I'm on this center one. 
If I move this center one, it's going to keep the others in the same place. So the advantage to that is you can work on specific areas without changing certain things. So in this case, I have my highlights up here. This way, when I move these sort of mid or high mid tones, I'm not affecting the highlights anymore because that's being anchored down by a point. And of course, the nice thing about curves is you can make as many points as you want. So in this case, I think that's pretty good for what I'm looking for. It's kind of bright, airy, but it's still nice and contrasty. I'll probably bring it down a little bit. And I mean, that looks pretty good. So curves are great for doing a basic grade, or excuse me, correction. But then what happens when you want to start actually grading? So let's go ahead and we're going to actually make a new node. So again, if you were in a different program, you either make a new layer or a new, uh, you know, Lumetri panel, whatever you want to do, however your workflow is. Let's try something different with curves. So one thing that we might want to do is let's say that we want to select a specific color and change the values of that. So let's select green here. And let's say I want to pull the green out of a certain portion. So a lot of these are, th this green is pretty dark. Uh, we can tell it's not. If we go to our waveform, we turn off our red and blue channels, we can see that our green is pretty low, especially these really dark ones here. So I'm going to make a couple points and I'm going to actually pull this down. And what that's going to do is you can see that is now pulling the green out of those shadows. But I could boost the green if I wanted to. So you can see how you can start to really, really start to mess with stuff. So let's bring that back to, actually, let's go just to, well, we'll leave it at the RGB. Let's say I wanted to bring my shadows a little bit more red. And then I wanted to bring the greens up in the highlights ever so slightly. Not that I would really do that, but let's say that's what I wanted to do. Boom, there you go. And let's say that was what you wanted to do for grading. Or you could do something different where you could bring the blues up in the shadows and pull them from your highlights and then bring your reds up in your highlights and then your reds down in the shadows. Now again, uh, I'm doing this sort of in big brushes and big strokes. This is not what you'd want to do, but you get the idea. So those are some basic curves, but I want to show you some really cool curves and some things that you can do uh, to really kind of amp up uh, your image. So again, we have our nice corrected shot. Now I'm going to stay on this first node or again in your first layer, however you're doing it, because there are different curves. There are also hue versus hue curves, hue versus saturation, hue versus luma, and then luma versus saturation, and then saturation versus saturation. I don't use that very often. Um, let's talk about a couple of these quick. So hue versus hue is basically you can select a hue and you can actually change the hue of that. So this is really cool. Let's say we want to make this and we got notes back and we want this to look more fall. So what I can do is I can select the green and in DaVinci Resolve it actually selects the point. I think Premiere does it the same as well. Um, but you could just manually find the green. And you can see that if I pull on this now, it's going to change all of those. Now I want to widen this out because I want way more of that green to be changed. And you can see as I pull it up and as I pull it down, it changes. So if we wanted to make this look maybe more fall, what I might do is pull this up a little bit so we start to get those yellows. So suddenly now this image looks a little more yellow or maybe a little more amber. And again, it could look like it's a little bit more of a fall. I'm gonna move that even more. And boom, we could do something like that. Now granted, I'm not saying that looks perfect and you'd wanna do a little bit more, but suddenly now we have an image that before it looked like it was in the summer and now it looks like it could be fall. So hue versus hue is super powerful and you can do a lot with that. Hue versus saturation is pretty self-explanatory. Let's say that we thought these greens were just too much, that they were just way too saturated and we didn't like that. We could make two points again, make a center point and we can pull down the green and as you can see, it's desaturating any of those greens. So I can widen that out. And then now I've desaturated those greens from the trees. So this is a nice way that you can select a color and desaturate that color or vice versa. You can saturate that color. So if you really wanted to make the green super intense, you could do that. So that's hue versus saturation. And then hue versus luma. This is actually very cool too, because you can actually adjust the luma values based on this. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select that green. In my case, I'm going to widen it out. And again, I could manually do this just by making points, making three points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down. And what this is doing, this is actually darkening the luma values. And you can kind of see it over in the waveform over here as I move it. It's brightening and darkening those luma values based on the hue. 
So depending on what color I select, I can either brighten or darken it. So right, let's say I want to darken up the background that's a specific color. You can just pull that down and boom, you're good. So that is Hue versus Luma. And then the last one that I'm going to talk about is Luma versus Saturation. And this is actually a really cool secret. Uh, I say secret, but it, it's nice. <laughs> Make a new node or a new layer. And what I like to do is I select a point here, select a point there, and then I select another point in between each. And what this is doing is this is your darkest values to your brightest values. Now, in real life, pure white and pure black, uh, pure black is the absence of color, and of course pure white is all colors, but we perceive them with no saturation. So let's say we were to do something where we added a lot of blue in the shadows, like a lot, like way more than you'd ever do, and then like a ton of highs right this looks like crap and you might start to get that like hazing effect we can actually see it on top here where it's cropped that looks bad and you might say well why is that and it's because your black values and your white values are still being saturated so you're just you're just painting over basically but what you need to do is if you can drop this and drop this and then you can adjust these to taste we're going to pull them down a little bit more what that just did is everything now that is pure black is desaturated 100%. So again, saturation is high and desaturation is low. So we have pulled the colors out of pure black or pure white. Now, of course, you could do more. You could pull this like down here. So it's a little bit more. So anything that's kind of white or kind of black is now going to be desaturated. Um, and I mean, that makes a huge, huge difference. If we turn that on and off, that's what it looks like. You know, this looks fake and, and, and really bad and cheap, like an Instagram filter. And this, you can tell, still has the blues and the reds and the highs, what we did. But again, it looks more natural. So Luma versus Saturation is a really nice one. And I actually like to, when I grade, I'll do all my colors and all my LUTs and whatever I want to do. And then at the end, I'll always put a Luma versus Saturation. That way I can make sure my blacks are pure black and my whites are pure white. Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. I know curves can be kind of confusing and a little bit intense. And of course, there's a ton of videos out there if you want to learn more about curves. And I, you know, I recommend go out there and look at a bunch. But I just wanted to give you kind of a basic idea of how curves work and how you should be working with them and a little bit of tips and tricks on how to use them. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.